Good morning, Real Writers. Happy Sunday. I woke up wanting to do a video, which I usually do every week, but um, I don't always get to it every week. <laughs> I don't always have the wisdom, one would say, that day, or to be the channel for it rather than be the person who dispenses it, but rather channels it forward to you. Real writers who I hope are doing well, and I want to jump right in because I have a tendency to make longer videos if I don't. <laughs> so uh, several things to share. So the deck I'm using, I think I've used before, but it may have been um, one of the videos I did in the past that didn't actually succeed. So you may not have seen it before. This is the Earthcraft Oracle, um, and it's just gorgeous and um, the kind of deck that you can absolutely fall into visually and emotionally, and it's just perfect for the imagination, I think. So I'm also going to um, have some... I have a candle here, a creativity candle, it's Reiki charged, and um, sometimes I light these when I have them. So before I do, I'm going to read the little card that comes with it. Let my mind be free from the burdens of the world. Allow me to explore new dimensions, discover new thoughts, ideas, and emotions. And the matches are brought to you by Walt Whitman. <laughs> Let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. Um, and is that not what writing is? Standing before a million universes? I think it is. So I would maybe add to that, you know, a little excitement is okay, Walt Whitman. I think it's okay to also be excited before these million universes. So I'm just going to add that as well. And... light this candle. Try to do this around the camera. These have a tendency to sometimes go out before I light the candle. And it's a new candle. So hopefully, ah, there we go. Wonderful. So I think we're all set to dive into our reading. So we'll start with, you know what, I don't know that I ever start with card number three. So pick your card, middle, left, or right, or card one, two, or three. And let's start with three, because I don't think I've done that in a, an extremely long time. Oh, number 17, Medicine Woman. Wow. See what I mean? Like, can you not just fall into this card? It's just unbelievable. Okay, so let's see what the book says and then I'll add my, my thoughts. And what I love about this deck is it also comes with like, it comes with a little um, spell or meditation or some sort of ritual action to take and I'll share those as well. The medicine woman has initiated you into her sacred space of healing. Though powerful, magical, and deserving of respect, a medicine woman is merely a facilitator of Mother Earth's magic. She looks to nature, communing with plants, animals, crystals, and all Earth's sacred tools to observe subtle messages to guide her hands and her works. These little messages let her know she's on the right path, and that profound healing is close by. Interpreting the patterns and synchronicities in these messages into medicine for the mind, body, and soul is the medicine woman's calling. You too have the gifts of a medicine woman, and you have called this card to you to unlock your ability to heal yourself and eventually others. Your life experiences have provided you with the lessons needed to live your life with purpose, meaning, and vitality. Each hardship you overcome and achievement you reach are shaping you into the powerful healer you are destined to become. Reflect upon your experiences 
and seek the patterns that will reveal your strength and potential to grow. So the first thing that comes up to me for me with this card is that if you chose this card, whatever you're working on as a writer, and this covers everyone, playwrights, essayists, songwriters, poets, um, fiction writers, nonfiction writers, creative nonfiction writers, journalists, whoever, if writing is involved, this is for you, um, is that your, this sentence, your life experiences have provided you with the lessons needed to live your life with purpose, meaning, and vitality. Each hardship you overcome and achievement you reach are shaping you into the powerful healer you are destined to become. And so this tells me that your writing is going to be healing for someone, you, but also for those who read your work. And that whatever you've experienced is going to come through this piece, whatever you're writing, and it may be overtly, or it may be, you know, subtle. It may be, um, you know, below Hemingway's iceberg, so to speak, where the iceberg is what the reader sees, but below is the rest of the massive iceberg that the reader doesn't see, but that is supporting what is above the waterline. So, or you may couch it in metaphor and figurative language so that it's not overt, but it does come through. It just depends on what your comfort level is with sharing that. But this tells me that whatever you're sharing is going to have a healing effect on you and your readers and allow them to also understand themselves and their experiences and how to deal with them and transform them and then perhaps also incorporate those lessons and share them with others, passing, passing the gift on. And I love this description of, um, of the healer, the medicine woman, but this, which is also very much the description of a writer. Interpreting the patterns and synchronicities in these messages received from nature into medicine for the mind, body, and soul is the medicine woman's calling. And that's what writers do as well. We bring all of these experiences and and things from our imagination and patterns, interpreting patterns, and whether that's community patterns, society patterns, national, global, whatever, you know, your next door neighbor, <laughs> the relationship you have with your next door neighbor, or your local business community, or whatever, whatever the patterns are that you're seeing in your own family, in your friends, in your schools, and whatever. I mean, this is what um, people often turn to to books to experience and to understand and to get a different perspective. So I love this idea that, you know, and I think this can be for anyone, but in particular, if you've chosen this card, that as a writer, writing is healing. I think we all know that. And I have um, journaling videos on another channel that I'll link below if you'd like to explore that a bit using um, tarot and oracle cards we journal on those cards so that can be very healing but um, the process of writing is healing the process of reading is healing and experiencing books and stories and writers are healers that's I love that that just feels that just feels very right to me and I hope it does to you as well so there's a little meditation here that involves hugging a tree so you have to <laughs> decide <laughs> If A, you want to do it, or and B, if you want to do it in broad daylight. So it's up to you. Um, <laughs> so this meditation is about embracing Mother Earth and the wisdom she is sending to your spirit. Find a tree you have a connection with, perhaps the one in your yard, or one you find when walking in nature that pulls you toward her. Hug the tree and close your eyes, taking a few minutes to feel comfortable in this space. Calm your mind and body and sink into the tree surrendering your weight to her. Feel her energy surround you like a big warm hug. Allow a joyful smile to lift your cheeks and welcome the relaxation that flows through your spine. Greet her not with your words but with your heart. Softly whisper into her bark, what guidance would you like to give me at this moment? Be mindful of any tingling you may feel or shifts in energy. Keep your eyes closed and relax into her support to allow for guidance to stream in. Okay, so if you do that, let me know. <laughs> I 
let me know what happens. Put it, put it in the comments. We'd, we'd all love to know. Okay, so let's go to, let's, we're going right to left. So let's do card number two in the middle. Wow, another powerful card. Oh, let me hold it up so you guys can see. Rise. Amazing. Okay, so number 22. It's time for an awakening. The traumas, wounds, and heartaches of your past are over now because you have been brave enough to confront them and burn them down. Now you are standing on the fertile ash of your past, ready to rise. This is a card of realignment and self-development. You're ready to charge ahead, so stop doubting yourself. You know what you want and need. The only thing missing now is for you to stand up and reach for it. After all you have been through, it is safe for you to share yourself with the world again. The right people are waiting for you to rise and greet them with an open heart. This card is auspicious for those of you looking for new love and friendships. So while I'm guessing this is a very inspiring card for all of us, um, if you are um, watching all of the cards, and especially for those of you who've chosen it, um, I'm guessing that underneath is a little, maybe a lot, who knows, everyone's been through something different in this pandemic. You're also feeling um, exhausted and burned out. That's what's coming up for me with this card. And I don't, I don't mean to project my own on here, but it's something I'm hearing from a lot of people. Um, I'm, I'm seeing this card extremely literally right now with the crack uh, and the fire. And, um, but I also see it as transformation, okay? So bear with me. So I, I feel like this is the literal image of where most of us are right now. Just we're, we're cracked, we're in pieces. We've been broken down and broken open and not yet sure of how the pieces will come together and um, reform and what shape that form will take. Or maybe we feel like the, the pieces will never um, come together again. <laughs> and, you know, hope, but I also mean like the fire can transform the pieces so that they're new. It's not just reassembling the same, the same pieces, but they've been through fire, so they're transformed. Um, and that we're, this is, we're burned out. We're, we do, we are on fire, but in a burned out sort of way. Um, and I'm looking at the smoky clouds behind her and feeling like, <laughs> yep, that's, and there's a lot of, uh, things are in obscurity, things are smoky, things are unclear. Um, it's just a difficult, um, time to use a completely lame word for how this all feels. Um, so I feel like so we're, we're sort of poised here, broken and burned out. Um, and this fire is coming in to transform us, to cleanse us, to purify us, to um, lift us up, to, um, you know, to rise for sure. But there's a little bit of work do to be done maybe a lot of work to be done before this. I feel like this is the beginning and, um, but it's going to be, I don't know that it's going to be as fast a process as this card implies. I would like to believe that it, that it is. Um, you're ready to charge ahead. So stop doubting yourself. I don't know. I would love to know how, how ready you all are to charge ahead. If you are, bless you, please say something encouraging in the comments for everyone. Um, but I, I'm guessing a lot of you are not. Um, the traumas, wounds, and heartaches of your past, I don't know that we really do feel that those are we are over those. Um, but it is true that you've been brave enough to confront them and burn them down. And we are standing on fertile ash, ready to rise. I do believe that. I just think it's moving slower and more unpredictably than we expected. But I would say that this is definitely a card of hope and transformation and that we're ready to be set on fire. <laughs> Figuratively, of course. 
Um, but of course, right now there are wildfires um, raging. So for those of you for whom this is a, a very difficult card that may trigger and upset you, um, you know, skip over this and definitely go pick another card. Maybe, maybe decide to focus on the Medicine Woman card, which is number three, if you didn't watch the previous, um, the previous card reading in this video. Um, but maybe we can look at it as it's coming, there's a transformation coming, we will feel this awakening, we will feel this excitement and passion and we're ready. She's ready, obviously you can see that she's ready and she's surrendering herself to it and she's going to let it take her and lift her up. So we just, if we are just in that same position where we're ready, we're surrendering to it and we're going to go where it takes us, I think that's all that we need to do right now. Um, I would maybe say to this, change the name of this card for us today as be ready to rise. And that's, that is a little more manageable, I feel, for all of us, is be ready to rise. And um, yeah, and embrace the hope of that and the transformation and awakening of that. That's really exciting. Uh, just on a more practical level as a writer, um, it may be that something you're working on or something you're passionate about, um, it needs to change in a significant way. It needs to be broken up Look at the pieces of it, look at the patterns of it, break things up, move them around, and then you'll, you'll find a new, a renewed passion and excitement for the work, and it will catch fire and move forward um, with that early intensity that maybe has been lost. Okay, this was a really interesting card. <laughs> I love this card. It's really interesting. Okay, now we're going to go to number one. Oh, I didn't tell you all the, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you all the, the little ritual, apologies. So let's turn the card over again. Okay, so this is the awakening breath. The breath work ignites the power you hold and opens your mind's eye, bringing you a sense of knowing and reminding you of your purpose. Start by releasing all the air from your chest. Hold your breath for four seconds, then inhale through your nose for four seconds. Hold your breath for four seconds then exhale through your nose for four seconds. This is a four, four, and four breath. Repeat this cycle for three minutes. As you hold your breath for the last time, ask your higher self to open you to divinity, to come into your presence and guide you down your divine path. So why don't we all do this for a second? Just one, just one of these breaths. So just exhale all the air from your, your lungs and let's hold our breath for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Now inhale for the count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four. Now exhale through your nose for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Hope that gave you a little little moment there, moment of pausing and peace there. And oh, how funny, this seems really appropriate. Wild winds, number 42. Interesting that the cards are all even. Um, in some way, I mean, in the final number, this is 42, which is six. The second card was, what was the second card? It was a four, so it was 22, so that was four, and then the other card added to eight. So that's really interesting. Um, another very active card, lots of um, movement and power in wind. There's all very healing um, and transformative cards here with Medicine Woman and rise with the fire and wild winds here. So if you haven't looked at all the other cards in the reading, you might want to take another look. So let's look at the wild winds card. Do you hear the whispers in the wind? Have you ever been alone in nature when suddenly you hear a word or a sound, but no one is there? 
Earth Mama speaks to us in many ways, but it takes time and practice to hear her with clarity. At first you may wonder if it's just your mind playing tricks on you. Do not allow doubt to block the wisdom of the Earth. The Wild Winds card commonly appears when a spirit or the universe has sent you messages in the form of synchronicities or patterns, like recurring numbers, symbols, colors, and shapes that you missed. This card is a nudge to open your senses to the messages that you have been closed off to. Sometimes a message can be so clear that it becomes overwhelming. Other times, messages are so subtle that you must be completely calm and still to see them. Either way, you are being called to make sense of the little clues being left for you. To do so, you must listen to your heart and trust that you know what is being presented to you. Don't overthink the synchronicities that come into your life. Do not try to approach them with logic and reason. Feel them in your spirit and know that your first instinct is often the correct one. So this to me feels like someone who is just starting a project. If you pick this card, I feel like you're just starting a project or maybe you're just coming back to your writing um, after a break. And honestly, I have to say that I have done very little writing during the pandemic. Um, I've, my job in particular has been almost 24 seven, it feels like, and still, and um, I just, I, I've written some poems. If, I, if it wasn't for my, one of my very dear friends who meets with me regularly, it pushes me to write poems. I don't know that I would be writing. And the few poems that I've written, I think maybe five or six, because we're not always able to meet super regularly, have been getting, going in a different new direction. And I think I'm getting back to the way I wrote poetry long ago before I got my MFA and I got mired in this is how you should do things. Um, I think MFAs can be helpful in some ways um, because you get to work with writers who you admire and um, and be mentored by them. But I think it also kind of puts us in a bit of a box. I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit here because I think that also having a container for your writing and working in form can be so liberating. Um, Saying, oh, you can do anything is a bit paralyzing, but saying, here's a sonnet, see what you can do and look at the rules of the sonnet and the boundaries and then work within and out and push them is it's really exciting and liberating. So um, just having something to push back against, I mean, uh, pushing some boundaries. So um, I, w I forgot where I was going with this, but um, <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe I needed to tell people that if you haven't been writing <clears throat> very often, that's okay. Um, oh, it was going back to um, this card feeling to me like someone who's just starting a project or coming back to a project and really, really needing uh, some sort of catalyst, but a different catalyst than was in card number two with the fire. So... Um, how does I'm interested in knowing how this wind card appears to you because um, wind can be gentle and, and subtle and magical and then it can also be kind of terrifying and here it looks supportive I think but it's also a very strong wind look at all these leaves blowing everywhere it feels like a, a wind that's transforming summer into fall to me um, you know those days when suddenly the wind comes in and blows a ton of leaves down and the trees are a little bit barer and they've already started to change color and you realize, okay, fall's coming and summer is, better hang on to what I have here because summer is almost over. So this is a, a transformative, powerful wind and she's turned her head and she's got her eyes closed. So she's listening. Um, she's sort of, she's in the center of it. She's experiencing it. Um, but she's also got her shoulders hunched, so she's bracing herself a little bit. Um, so like I said in one of the other cards, uh, and it, but in a different way, if you're just starting a new project here, or you're coming back to another project, or you're trying to reimagine a project in a new way because it's not working, or like me, you feel like you just want to change everything about your writing and find out what 
what you want to say now because we we say different things at different stages of our lives and who are you now after this pandemic like who are you do you want to write the same things are the subjects the same ones you want you're interested in you're passionate about or is it something new and if it's something new and you don't know what it is yet that can be um, disconcerting and it, the uncertainty of that and the confusion of that can be difficult but this card is saying that the wind is going to to whisper those messages to you and those and share um, synchronicities and patterns and is asking this card is asking for you to look for those things and to be open to them and not try to um, I get I wanted to say um, I don't know what I wanted to say about that. Not ignore them, not res but resist them. Don't resist them. And don't try to put them in a box right away. Just this card is saying, um, either way, you are being called to make sense of the little clues being left for you. To do so, you must listen to your heart and trust that you know what is being presented to you. Don't overthink the synchronicities that come into your life and do not try to approach them with logic and reason. Feel them in your spirit and know that your first instinct is often the correct one. So just go with whatever is coming to you and don't be thinking, oh, down the road, well, this isn't a marketable book or no one's going to, no one writes songs like these or um, I wrote an essay about this once and nobody wanted it or whatever it is that you feel like, don't be looking ahead to your audience or about an agent or about a reader or about making money or being successful don't think of any of those things just follow the clues that are left to you and go with your first instinct in terms of putting them together and making sense of them that's all that's being asked of you right now okay so I'm going to turn all of these over in case oh and let me tell you what the ritual is for that one I keep forgetting to do that we're just going to turn all of these over so if you're attracted to the other cards at this stage you can go back and, and look at them okay so I love this jar spell it's a jar spell <clears throat> for wild winds and I think this is something everybody can do I just think it's really cool all you need is a jar and a lid and it can be whatever size you want this is probably the easiest spell you'll ever do but you shouldn't underestimate its power when you pull this card or when there is a message you just can't comprehend Hold the jar in one hand and the lid in the other. Stand still outside in nature, preferably in a forest or a park with lots of trees surrounding you. Say aloud, nature spirits, speak into the wild winds that which you have intended for me to know. Wait until you feel the wind blow and scoop the wind into the jar and close the lid. Place the jar beside your bed and ask the wild winds in the jar to enter your dreams and reveal the message. When your message is revealed, thank the winds and release them back to Mother Earth. Isn't that fabulous and amazing? Okay, so you're, I think everybody should do this. <laughs> I think everyone should go and get a jar and go do this sometime this week or whenever you, you know, whenever you encounter this video and you watch this video. I would love to hear that you did it and then also what the message was that you received. And it could take, it, it may not happen right away. You may not get it that night. It may take a while. It could take a month. Who knows? But I would love for you to leave a message and tell me what your, um, what the message you received was. I just, I think that's amazing and wonderful. So everyone, thank you so much for joining me. And again, if you are interested in um, journaling, check out my other channel with uh, videos like this one where we journal for 10 minutes at the end. You pick a card and we go through them and then we journal for 10 minutes at the end. I wish you a wonderful week and happy writing.